I just released the video on, actually it was on making this thing here, kinda. I put a grinding wheel on my table saw so that I could uh, sharpen my jointer and planer knives. And I got that idea actually from a fine woodworking compilation book that my brother gave me recently. I was going through it and I saw that. I saw, I don't know, maybe three examples of the same thing in different, uh, done in different ways. And I said, hey, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. So I said to myself, you should do that because uh, all my blades have gotten really dull and I've been putting off sharpening them because you have to do it. Well, the jig I had, you would do it by hand. And this is way faster. Faster because it gets that nice, flat, straight, almost 100% perfectly true. I say almost 100% perfectly true because this is just woodworking tools after all. You're not going to get it. And really, it doesn't have to be. It just has to be very close to straight. If it's a few thousandths off, you know, off the knife, it's not going to make any difference. So, because, I mean, after you plane, unless you're some sort of wood butcher, you sand. So... Sanding, you know, gives you variation too. Like woodworking, I keep saying, woodworking is not wood machining. It's woodworking. You're working with it. You're working with it. Anyway, so made this to do that, and I thought I would make an interesting video. So I did that. And um, like I said, I got it from that book. There are a few other ideas in there that I want to look through. Not a lot, though. Surprisingly little. And uh, I think there's like three books. I give you a total of five, but two are specific on furniture and, and um, the other ones are on shop projects and stuff like that. But a lot of fairly, uh, you know, run of the mill stuff that's already been covered in, in so many places. And kind of some of it's not even useful anyway, right? So, you know, in my judgment, anyway, you might think differently. Anyway, so yeah. I like that. That's a good, good project. Also, I should mention that, like, this is completely, almost completely rebuilt from where I started. I actually recut the angle so that it sharpens the knife edge at 40 degrees rather than 45. And I did that because when I put it on the jointer, it seemed like it was kicking a little bit. I think that the jointer knives need to be uh, no, it wasn't the joint or not. It was the planer. The, jo the planer seemed like it was kicking a little bit. As in the back side, like the back edge of the knife was, was hitting the wood as it's swinging around. Right? Because it makes a cut in a circular path. And if the, the back edge of the bevel that you've just ground is, is contacting the wood, that's going to affect how it works. So I changed the angle to 40 degrees. And then w that's kind of better anyway, because then that gives you the option of adding a secondary bevel at 45 degrees and because it's very short then it won't it won't hit the work it won't hit the stock as it's cutting through and it works good and i'm going to keep it and you can see the fingerprints on her from doing the hand sharpening and also what else was i going to show you oh yeah i came up with a, a kind of a very quickly i have did it very quickly but i i want to do again but i want to orient it the other way i want to orient it so that the chisel is coming at the stone like this and then you could park it over the stone and slide it back and forth to do a hollow grind right and that will work a lot better than what i had set up before uh, but in the meantime, this was an old inch and a half. Is this inch and a half? Yeah. Uh, chisel that was all beat up. I don't know what I was using to, like this on, but I got it razor sharp. And here I'll show you razor sharp. Like when you get a kitchen knife that's supposed to be sharp, one of the things that the you know, real test for it is what's called a push data, a push cut. That's where you take the knife without slicing and it, it you push it against the paper and it cuts it. So I'm going to try to get in closer here. And you have to hold it pretty close. Look at that. That's not a slice, guys. That's a push. 
clean cut on the chisel here. And this, you know, it's kind of damp out here. That affects the paper. But, and I already started cutting there, so do it, try to do it again. There it is, see? See that? Awesome, it's really sharp. That's me grinding it on the table saw with that stone and then taking it the rest of the way on my sharpening jack. In the last video, I talked about taking apart the CNC table and mounting the top on this door so I can swing down. As you can see, I've taken apart this table, so I'm going to do it. And I spent some time thinking about a tricky hinge um, mechanism so that, you know, when you stand it up, it'll kind of fall down a little bit and lock in place on the hinge and then I said nah just use regular hinges and then make a clip up here to hold it in place and that's what I'll do and I'm gonna probably be doing this today although I've got another project in the works that I have to get done this week so I, you know that's the reason why this is still here and not mounted already and then I got comments from I got one comment anyway <laughs> not a lot of people watch that video you got you, are you guys getting bored with me or what Maybe I'm not doing enough rant videos. Maybe I need to throw in a few more rants. Anyway, so I had a comment. Uh, aren't you going to like fold it down, leave it down, and load it up with, with stuff? Well, here it is here. Table saw is here, right? So it's out of the way of the table saw, me using the table saw. So it could stay down with, like, with that in mind. But that's the door into the shop. And it's really in the way. I mean, you come in here, and if the edge of the table is here, it forces you this way. Now, I'm not going to say that it can't happen, <laughs> but I'm thinking that the, like having this in this location will make it more likely that I'll be folding it up when I'm done. And that's the idea 100%. Don't only fold it down when I need to do something on it or use it to help cut a larger piece on a table saw. You know, the way the world works is that anything that's perceived as being dangerous, there's gonna be someone looking to take it away. And once they're finished taking away all the big stuff, then they'll start coming for the smaller stuff, like the, the you know, the table saws, the workshop in your house type thing. You know, I can see the point in the future, and people think I'm exaggerating here, but I'm not. If you look through history, especially recent history, and see how incrementally things have been taken away, you'll see this coming down, down the, you know, at some point in the future, where you're going to have to have a permit to have a workshop in your house. You're going to have to maybe go through some training course before you can buy a tool like a table saw. Either that or it'll be so safety up that it will not work function properly. It will be next to useless to have. You know, a good example of that, in the last video on this channel that I made, I made this comment. And besides, I got like several guns. <laughs> and of course I got comments on that, as expected. I knew people would. Um, Tell you about guns in Canada. I got also got a comment saying, what, you're allowed to have guns? I thought you weren't allowed to have guns in Canada. When I was born in 1966, anyone 16 years of age and older could go and buy a handgun, could go and buy an automatic weapon, actually. There weren't any restrictions on any of those things here. There's a whole Wikipedia page that steps through all of the, say, landmarks on the way to where we are here as far as guns go where it starts off with like basically you're allowed to own whatever you want up until today where everything is highly restricted it's almost impossible like it is de facto impossible to obtain a handgun here unless you are in some government agency you know or a police force or something like that you're a private citizen you're not getting a handgun all right, and it's getting more and more difficult to, to own like rifles and shotguns, and that's the way it works. I mean, if you think that they're going to stop with the big stuff, you know, the guns and so called big dangerous things, uh, and leave you alone to work in your shop, <laughs> think again because this is the way people like some people this is what they do, you know, they're not actually productive. 
they don't accomplish anything. All they do is live for taking away something from someone else. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada.